I was talking with an old friend of mine the other day, and he's never really been into politics. But with all the stuff going on right now, the riots, the coronavirus, and the election coming up, he's realized he needs to start paying attention. After we were talking for a while, he asked me a question that I thought was kind of interesting. He said, what's one word that best describes the left? Of course, a lot of words went through my head, and I'd be interested to know what you guys think is the best word that describes the left. But what I decided on was hypocrisy. Because it's always about politics with the left, they necessarily have to be hypocrites. So here you go, my friend. I've made this video to lay it out for you. Let's start with this recent clip from the leftist hypocritical media. Are the people there just not worried about it, Cal? Are they not worried about their own personal safety? I haven't met anybody who is. I met some folks actually from Lake Geneva who lived in the area. They were staying a few miles outside of town where I were. And they said they're worried about it. They're worried about that second spike. They're worried about folks coming in from Chicago. But they'll quickly add at the same time, this is a place that relies on that business. I think people here want a little bit more funding when it comes to these programs so that they could stay closed. But again, I think people felt like the Supreme Court made the decision here in Wisconsin that it was time to open up. But you can see here, just around. Nobody's wearing them. Nobody's, uh, the there you go, including the cameraman. Yeah. Katie. That was a report about how people in Wisconsin should be ashamed that they're not wearing masks during this pandemic. And the guy they tried to make an example of called out their hypocrisy. He points out that the cameraman isn't wearing a mask and neither is half the crew. Did you see how much confidence that reporter lost after he got busted? But you can see here, just around. Nobody's wearing them. Nobody's, uh, the there you go, including the cameraman. Yeah. Katie. Do these people really believe that we think that reporter does not take his mask off after the camera quits rolling? You know, like the CNN reporter does after a White House press briefing? Have a great weekend. Um, and I like your pink blazer, Caitlin. Thank you. Can you uh, just tell us more infections at the White House? Have there been any more positive tests? Tests? Hypocrites. They're all hypocrites. They have no interest in telling the truth. They have no interest in giving us the news. Their only objective is to work with Democrats to push narratives that help them politically. That's why news people can stand in front of a burning building that's just been looted and announce that the protests have been mostly peaceful. I, I, I want to be clear in how I characterize this. This is a, mostly a protest. Uh, it, is not, uh, it is not, generally speaking, unruly. It's why the staffs of the New York Times and the Washington Post won Pulitzer Prizes for writing about Russia collusion, a completely fabricated story. This will give you a good laugh. The Pulitzer board described the reason they gave the awards to these two staffs was because of their, quote, deeply sourced, relentlessly reported coverage in the public interest that dramatically furthered the nation's understanding of Russian interference in the 2016 presidential election and its connections to the Trump campaign and president-elect's transition team, and his eventual administration. Further, the nation's understanding of Russian interference and its connections to the Trump campaign. What connections? The media lied over and over again about Trump colluding with Russia and then got rewarded for it. That's probably worse than Obama winning the Nobel Peace Prize before his presidency ever began. Trump had, in fact, been telling the truth the entire time. There wasn't any collusion whatsoever but the Pulitzer board stands by their decisions. We know now that the Obama administration planted spies in the Trump campaign, and I bet none of these award-winning newspapers will dare seek the truth by directing hard questions to people from the Obama administration. I mean, when was the last time you saw a Democrat field a tough question from a reporter? It doesn't happen very often. Their hypocrisy is easy to see when you look at these rich celebrities who donate money to bail out rioters and looters. They're down with the cause until it shows up at their front door, as we saw with Chris Martin Palmer, a former sports writer for ESPN. He changed his Twitter profile to be of George Floyd. Then he tweeted a picture of a building on fire and wrote this, burn that down, burn it all down. 
Then a couple days later, he wrote this. They just attacked our sister community down the street. It's a gated community, and they tried to climb the gates. They had to beat them back, then destroyed a Starbucks, and are now in front of my building. Get these animals the F out of my neighborhood. Go back to where you live. <laughs> in a matter of 48 hours, he went from supporting the destruction of our society in the name of equality to calling them animals because they were in his community. What do you think those celebrities who donated money to bail out rioters and looters would do if those rioters and looters showed up in their neighborhoods? Just like this guy, they'd start calling them animals and want the police to protect them. Of course, they don't need the police to protect them because they live in areas protected by private security. That's why celebrities like Natalie Portman, John Legend, and Lizzo can support defunding the police. They don't need the police in their neighborhoods. Here's a few pictures of Natalie Portman's place up in the hills above Santa Barbara, California. While she's safe up hidden away in the hills, she advocates for police departments to be defunded. But isn't it strange how when award show season rolls around, their events look like this. They're hypocrites, and they have to be. Black Lives Matter cares about George Floyd, but won't say a thing about the dozens of blacks murdered in Minneapolis every year. The president of the New York's BLM chapter went to Minneapolis to protest, and here's what he said about it. Quote, when the fires were burning and people were chanting, I just felt liberated for a brief moment, and I felt for one of the only times in my life that the government had no control over me. Unquote. And of course, BLM was all in with Bernie Sanders, the candidate who wants government to control every aspect of our lives. The simple truth is, when you dig into the politics of the left, you find that the only thing consistent about their movement is their hypocrisy. They're hypocrites of the highest order. Career Democrat politicians who've been in Washington so long and are so old that they can't get up out of a virtue signaling stance. <laughs> want to blame the president for what's happening right now. They've been in Washington for decades, but somehow it's now all Trump's fault. Hypocrisy is the word that I think best describes the left and the Democrats. To my old friend, I hope this helps clearly explain what I was saying the other day. And please, check out the comments because we got a lot of smart people over here at Blue Collar Logic that will let you know the one word they think best describes the left and why they think that. So thanks for watching, and I'll talk to you later. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, subscribe to our channel, and if you want to become a supporting member of Blue Collar Logic, click on the link in the description and give what you can.